Mark Alf from CWD back at it today um, making some pond kits. I finished a 4 by 3 meter, forgot to video that, so um, yeah, sorry about that. But I made a 2.5 by 1.5 sleeper pond behind me there. I'm doing this video for the customer, show them how to stick it together because there's only, I think there's only 19 pieces in this pond. I know 18 pieces in this pond, so with it only being 18, uh, we've just done the numbering system that we did on the first time where we've just gone round and dotted. So I'll turn you around and show you. So this is the inside of the pond. So we've started with number one, as normal, is below the window. So where you want the window facing, I have your number one there. And then where your window is, on your first course, as you're looking at the pond, on the left, that's where your end grain is, on the left hand side. It is a bit, bit wiggly this, because it's not screwed together. Uh, and with it being on end, they do, they do kind of lean like this and, and go all over the shelf. So once you screw it in, like you can see this here, there's a gap at the top, not at the bottom. So when you're screwing these in, your first course, the first screws you put in, there's going to be one at the top and one at the bottom here. So if this was the first course here, we'd get that. So it looks flat there, we'll get the bottom screw in and then we'd push this piece out, get that matched up, push that on and then screw it. And then you'll have a nice flush uh, bit like that. And then once you've done that in all four corners, then you get your screws in all the way around and we've got a bird's eye view map that shows you how many screws you want to get in there so in every uh, corner you do a big bolt so the bolts go all the way through into the course below so they're they're really big and um, really strong and we you know you, you put in one every sort of you know 150 maybe even less mil so um yeah we we send out loads of screws because we prefer to use a bit too many rather than too little so once you have built this portion of your kit you're ready to measure it so you have to measure from the inside to the inside on the length same on that side at the top and then measure the bottom as well the reason we do that because if you build it out of plum it's more of a rhombus sort of shape it, you know, it won't quite be that bad but let's just give you an idea of what i mean if it's slight if you've been building it and progressively coming out by 20 mil each side at the top your liner if you measured it at the bottom it'd be 40 mil short and then it'd be stretching and then you'd lose your guarantee on the liner because it'd be in correct size um, so measure your top length and the bottom length and your top length, bottom length, so that's both sides, and your top width, and your bottom width on both sides. So once you've done that, send off your liner measurements to us. We have it made normally, it's with you before a week. Sometimes it takes a bit longer in busy times. And while you're waiting for the liner, you can install your window. So your window is actually this piece over here. So it's a 1200 by 500. So you can choose, this is how thick your coping is going to be. So you can use that as a, as a gauge if you want. What I'd recommend you do is put that, this piece of wood is going to be your windowsill. We'll send out separate coping when you order your liner. The reason we do that is because customers, um, the customers have installed coping before and then the liner comes and like what do we do to stick the liner over the top but no it goes under the coping so we, we just send things out as you need them we find it better you get a better experience that way is less mistakes so with once you got this this is how thick your coping is going to be so if you measure from the top of there down 500 mil and then your glass is going to come to the top of that there and then do the same on this side so same on that side. So that's how wide your window is going to be, that, that plank of wood. So it's going to be 100 mil behind uh, either side. So on this side as well, measure from there down 500 mil. Then get this, screw it on one side and then get your spirit level on this because it'll pivot and make sure you get that level. Because if that's not level, 
Once water's in the pond and you're looking at it, if your wind is not level and you and the water is going to be level into it, you're going to have a bit of a diagonal line, it's going to look daft. So we recommend that you use a spirit level on the bottom. Also use a spirit level because the glass is perfectly flat. This you know might not be, might be a little bump in it somewhere. When you're actually fixing the glass in, so once that piece of wood's on there, I'll just stick it down here so you can understand what my next point is. So once you install your glass, you're going to put blobs of sealant. We'll send sealant out, sit blobs of sealant all the way around here. The reason we use blobs is because the water can escape down there. So yeah, use blobs. You don't, you don't have to use a full bead. You know, our sealant's held a ton and a half pack of sleepers before. So, you know, it's strong stuff. It's going to hold a little 40 odd kilo window. No problem whatsoever. Get your blobs on and then you sit your glass on top of this and then push it on and then little clamps. If we've got clamps in stock, we'll send them out. Sometimes they run out, um, but you don't need them, but they're good just to, to hold on there. And then once you've got that on, while the sealant's still nice and squishy, get your spirit level on top of the glass as well. And then that'll, that'll be, you'll be doubly sure that once it goes off, it's gonna all be nice and flat. Then after 24 hours, you can take whatever clamps off, cause that'll just be bonded to that piece of wood, you know, pretty much eternally. Once you try and remove the glass, it'll rip bits of wood off. So it's really strong stuff. Um, then when your liner comes, your liner goes in, you roll it out long ways. So roll it out the length of there, and then you unravel it, get your shoes off, step in the middle, push your bottom corners in, and kind of stick your foot down there. I do that, have someone else with you, two people doing the liner, even with a small pond like this, it'll be much easier. Your most important side is that side. You want that to be a nice flat sheet. So you want it held down there and held down there. And then you'll be able to feel your glass behind the liner. Watch our other YouTube videos that show you how to install the glass. But essentially what you're going to do is you're going to cut that, use a, a nice fresh Stanley blade, cut the liner down here. You can use a piece of chalk. Your first time I rec recommend that because you can feel a bit of, you'll be able to feel the edge of the glass just sticking out here. All you have to do is just follow a line down there. Do a nice straight line with a choke. Cut it with a nice fresh Stanley blade. Same with the bottom and the other side. And then you put more glue, MS300, on the inside. And then you just push the liner on. Then the next day, you can fill it up. And then, um, and then once you've filled it up, leave it for 24 hours, just in case there's any leaks. We've only had one leak and that was due to the customer cutting the liner a bit too big so there was like half an inch on one side he ended up just filling it with ms300 he's still got the liner i need to get the sizes of actually so yeah once you've had it full then you can put your copings on the reason we don't put the copings on and then fill it up is because the liner is going to be pushed all up there you're going to have it all bunched up around there and it's just going to look unfinished so wait until your pond's as full as you want it, and then you can pull the, pull the liner, get it screwed down, just get the coping screwed down. So you can either mitre your corners, depends how confident you are, we'll just send you out bare bits of wood. So you'll get a few pieces of wood, you'll get enough to do the job, and if you, you can make a couple of mistakes. You can either just do it all to the end and do it square, or you can mitre it. I recommend just doing it to the end, because honestly, I've seen it done both ways and um, with a mitre, especially like this, having a slight little bump there. You can see it's only, you know, it's only like a mil or two. But if you do a mitre on that, it's just gonna look a bit finger. It's a chunky, rustic sleeper pond. So just keep things simple and things should be nice and easy for you. But if anyone has any questions or anything, let us know. Um, this pond is going to, let me see, I forgot, I've had, uh, I've had four that we're building today. So that's going to Tunbridge Wells. So that'll be sent out this week for you. Uh, if we can get out today, we'll get out today.